um, with One Life are vision planning, relationships, finances, and wellness. And, and in no particular order, because a lot of people are, are doing, you know, working on different areas of their life. But can you give us the, the quick and dirty version? I know quite a few people are familiar with you as well, but can you give us the, the quick and dirty version on why nutrition has become such a big part of, of your life and your mission and your business and everything that you're doing? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for asking. So there's a couple of reasons why I think that nutrition is kind of the cornerstone of like the wellness piece because I came into the industry uh, 10 years ago on Wednesday, literally, um, as a personal trainer. And I love training. I love geeking out on different like exercises that hit the muscles a different way and how do you build muscle and all these things. But I think that until your nutrition is locked down and very solid, um, it's the training piece is not going to be quite as effective. And not only is the training piece not going to be quite as effective, you are not going to be quite as effective in your life. And so I know that one life is filled with people who are high performers in a lot of areas. We have amazing dads and moms. We've got amazing people who are doing building businesses, entrepreneurs, industry leaders, and people who are just like well-spoken thought leaders across tons of different career paths. But the thing that all of them have in common is that everyone is going to feel better, have more energy, and perform at a higher level if they have their nutrition like in a way that will amplify those results rather than taking them down. So Hector, you and I were just talking about like what are the effects of pizza on your brain after the fact, you know? So I feel like sometimes you wake up in the morning and you're like, man, I feel like a brain fog. I need to get some coffee in me first thing. But it's not that you didn't sleep very well. It's just that you did not eat well the day before. And I kind of had this experience on Saturday because I maybe have had a few too many drinks, which led to some poor eating choices, which led to a really low-key Sunday for me, which was not, it's not ideal. So, I mean, I'm right there with you, so, like feeling the power of that nutrition on a, daily, on a daily basis. But the closer we can start trending towards that, like eating 90% at least, in a way that's going to amplify our performance on a daily basis, rather than eating in a way that's going to satisfy our taste buds, and just trying to reframe our paradigm around that, the better we're gonna feel, the more you're gonna get done, the more you're going to impact people around you in your life. Thanks for coming no, to my TED Talk. So, uh, so powerful. Um, I think that it's, it's great, because I'm about to put up the, the title of the talk onto our, our stream here, and if you guys are, not registered for the online summit. You can watch all of them on our Facebook page, but if you want to get all of these recordings sent to you, just go to onelifefullylive.org slash online summit. You'll have uh, slash online dash summit and you'll get access to the recordings as well. But the, the title of the talk is, is the two myths of, uh, we're gonna call it the two myths of, of eating. And I think that, you know, everybody eats. Um, my, my son, he, he came out of the womb you know, loving to eat. And so it, it, it's, a, it's a big part of, of people's lives. But I feel like there's so much, um, well, there's, there's these myths, there's these beliefs that have been handed down to us from grandma or grandpa or, you know, teachers or, or whatever it is. And so let's get into those two myths and let's talk about, you know, how they're, they're impacting people. And you can start, one of them is the, the breakfast myth and the other one is the nutritional myth. And I'm, I'm curious to, to hear what these are and how they're impacting people. Awesome. Yeah. So first of all, I just wanted to say that, like, I, I know, I know we are talking about high performance and how to be like, do better in your business and your family and, and with your physique. And I just want to say that I'm not a business coach. I'm not going to tell you how to convert more leads. I'm not going to tell you how to be a better father. I'm not going to give you the three tips to maximize your SEO. You know, um, none of those things are what I can help you with, but I know that if I can help you dial in that nutrition, even just a little bit more, you're going to be able to do better at all those other things that you're already are like pieces of your genius. So whatever it is that you do, nutrition is going to amplify that. And so while I can't tell you the three stocks you need to be investing in right now, that's not, that's not my, uh, that's not my lane at all. I know that if you can take these things and put them into practice, it's going to make you better at all those other pieces. So First of all, I just, here's the, the questions I like to ask people is kind of going into this is like, do you ever feel like there are certain times of the day where you just don't have the energy for your family, for your career, for an important, important meeting? You know, do you ever feel like you're maybe more uh, focused, productive, confident? Um, when you are, 
in control of your health rather than feeling a little bit out of control or eating kind of just to be like, just to have that, that hit of pleasure to eating that Cinnabon. And then I also, I always want to ask people like, well, how do you feel when you get home from work? Now, do you need, are you the kind of person who needs like to lay on the couch for like 10 minutes and like recover from your day? Or are you ready to get home and just hang out with your kids, hang out with your family, kind of be involved and on, but in a different facet? Are you, can you switch hats easily? Or do you need that downtime? Because I think a lot of times, if you're the type of person who needs to get home, lay down on the couch, turn on Netflix for 30 minutes or Sports Center or whatever, um, this is something you need to be paying attention to. This nutrition can really make a difference for you, okay? And like you said, Hector, there's so much stuff out there. There's so many myths. There's so much, there's so much information. We're living in the information age, right? So that you go online, you Google how to eat, how to get more energy or how to lose some belly fat or whatever else. And they come back with three, 38 million results, right? Keto diet, paleo, whole 30, intermittent fasting. Which one of those is right? Are they right for you? Are they even healthy? So there's a lot of stuff going on out there. And I totally get it that it's confusing. And especially when you're trying to just, just do the best for yourself and your family. So what I want to do right now is I want to basically give you a couple different things today. So I want to help teach you how to use your nutrition to augment your performance at work and your bottom line. Okay. I want to teach you the perfect breakfast that is going to burn fat, help you minimize your waistline and give you energy for the full day. I want to talk to you about the two myths about nutrition that you can stop believing right away. So I'm not going to like debunk keto or talk about, you know, paleo or whatever else, but there's two prevailing myths in our culture. I think that we need to just let go of if we want to maximize our energy and our physique. Okay. So with that said, let's talk about the first myth, which is the breakfast myth. Okay. So if you've ever watched Saturday morning cartoons or any sort of kid show, I have a one year old right now. So we're watching a lot of word party, which is, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Do you know that one, Hector? I don't know it, but I can, I can imagine. So we do a lot of, uh, ABC songs over here. So I'm sure they're, they're pretty similar. Yeah. But, but the crazy thing is in the middle of you're watching a YouTube video, um, they'll cut it and they'll start blasting your one-year-old, two-year-old, whatever, with ads for Frosted Flakes or for like the, well, I don't know who the two, what the two can is for, the loops, Fruit Loops, Fruit Loops. And, and every ad for Fruit Loops finishes with this one. You're a healthy part of your complete breakfast, right? Every one ad finishes that. So what do they show on the table? They show orange juice. They show two slices of toast, white toast. They show the bowl of cereal, high sugar cereal. They show a glass of milk and a glass of orange juice. Probably, you're probably really thirsty in the morning. I don't know. But it's this myth that we need to be eating a high energy, high sugar breakfast as a healthy part of our complete breakfast, okay? And anything on that table, the milk, the, the orange juice, the, the toast, the sugar cereal, all those things are going to massively pull you out of a hormonal balance especially if you're consuming those things first thing in the morning. So I have, a, I have a client who was doing everything he could to maximize his, his work day. So he, was, he has a brokerage here in Arizona. He was killing it at work. He was growing the company. He was selling a ton of houses and stuff, but he couldn't handle the pressures of building the business and then still having the family. So he'd get home, he'd crash, he'd feel bad. He was short with his wife, short with his kids. And it was causing him massive problems in his, in his marriage. It's causing him massive problems as a dad. And he came to me because he was like, man, I've been trying everything. I, I've been trying to lose weight. I know my energy is short. I know I've been short with my family. Um, I, he's like, I feel good at work, but like, I just can't push my energy through to be, to be still on at 6 p.m. when I get home. I was like, okay, what are you, what are you doing in the morning? He's like, well, get out of bed. Grabbing, grabbing something healthy, getting a banana, getting in my car, getting on the road. I was like, okay, hold on, pump the brakes. So to go back just a little bit, what, one thing that we're dealing with as a culture is what's called insulin resistance. So a lot of people, if, you have, if you're a male and you have over 15% body fat, normally this is characterized by having a little bit of extra around the waist, um, nothing, nothing crazy. Or a female, if you're over 22% body fat, what, that's, what that means is that you are not as in tune with the hormone insulin as you need to be. And the only reason that's important 
is because if you not, are not in tune, think of it as if you're taking off, you're in a jet plane and you want to be at cruising altitude. You want to be at 30,000 feet. So you pull that up and instead of hitting 30,000 feet, we go way above that. Now we're at 40,000 feet, a lot of turbulence up there. So we try to readjust, we drop back down. So now we're way under 30,000 feet, again, turbulence, okay? And then think about if we're doing that all day, all flight, we're just up and down, up and down in those turbulent zones. We're never flying at maximum speed and never using our maximum capacity for, our, for the energy that we have. That's what, that's what is akin to insulin resistance. So you're never just getting into a zone where you can just smoothly go throughout the day with the, met, the energy you need to make an impact on your work, on your family, and on your physique. So that's what this, this, his problem was. In the beginning of the day, what he was having was a healthy part of a nutritious breakfast, grabbing a banana, which is, I mean, it's healthy, it's natural, but it's a high sugar food. So it would bring in his insulin up, then he'd bring it down, get a, get a hunger spike around 1030, eat a bagel, back up, back down, back up, back down, all day long, which is exhausting on your body. Body's not made to go in those spikes up and down. So this is with the breakfast myth, the standard American diet myth, which by the way is anagram is sad, right? So if you're always bouncing up and down between these hormonal balances, you're never going to settle into that, like that zone of like flow state or just being feeling like you're on. You know, you felt that way when you're just like, when everything's flowing, you can just sit down and write, you can get into deep work. You're in a meeting, you're presenting, you're just killing it. You're with your family, you're like, you're just feeling great like that flow state, that feeling of being in the zone. And you can't get that way if your energy's not right, if your hormones aren't balanced. So until you hit those levels that I described, 15% for men or under 15% men, under 22% for women, you're basically gonna be out of, out of balance eating a higher sugar breakfast. Once you get under those levels, it becomes a lot easier to manipulate in your favor. But until what's then- the, What's the- because I imagine a lot of uh, guys who are listening are, are right around that number. And they think, you know, I'm, I look at, you know, just thinking selfishly, I'm like, a lot of times I look at myself and think, I'm, I'm good. I'm okay. I'm not, you know, I don't have a six pack, but I also don't have a, you know, beer keg on my, on my belly either. But, but 15% is, I feel like a lot of people are close to that. So what's the, what's so special about that number? And, um, I imagine we'll talk about how to get under that number, but I'm curious why 15. That's just like based on like a global study of a lot of different individuals, men and women. They were found that that was that's where you start to get the best benefits from your performance is by by actually dropping weight to be under 15 percent. Uh, up until that point, if you're if like let's just say you're a man, you're at 20 percent body fat adding in sort of supplements, adding in crazy exercise and, and training regimes, adding in all sorts of different like additives don't really make a difference at that point. The best thing you can possibly do to maximize your hormones, balance out the, like, the chemical processes going on in your body and maximize your energy and performance all happen at sub 15 levels. So if you're at 15.1, 15.6, like like that, yeah, sure, that doesn't make that big of a difference, but I want to give like a, a number that's something that you can aspire to. So I think yeah. that all of us, especially in One Life, we all are aspiring to greatness in a lot of arenas. So I want to just make it a little bit more concrete. Yeah, absolutely. One of the things that we've um, realized, or we were at a, a retreat recently uh, for the, the leadership team, and, and we kind of identify that our, our mission on One Life is to take people and move them along this path from, from surviving to thriving. And everybody is on that, that spectrum. And you know some people are further along, but, but absolutely I think that um, having a, a place to shoot for, and then now the, the tools to be able to measure that stuff are, are getting easier and easier. So that's, um, that's great. So, so we talked about the, the breakfast myth. Is there anything else around breakfast? I, know, I don't think that we've necessarily talked too much about what people should be eating for breakfast, but let's get a, a little bit more into you know, some of the, the tactics around getting around this breakfast. Myth. Absolutely, yeah. So the key now is going from this high sugar, high energy breakfast to giving ourselves something that's a little bit more level in terms of our hormones, in terms of our blood sugar and our insulin. So what we're gonna do is that instead of going high carb, high sugar, we're gonna go high protein, high fat, very minimal carbs. And don't, don't get this confused with like a keto diet. We're still going to have carbohydrates in our day. We're just going to do them in a way that it primes our body 
for the future, for the next day. So we're almost reversing the current trend of eat your big breakfast, eat a minimal lunch, and then eat a small dinner because that doesn't necessarily um, maximize your energy all day long. So what we want to do is start off with a very, very smooth, balanced hormonal profile. So, I mean, it sounds complicated, but literally all we're going to be doing is having, let me just like three eggs and a half of avocado. Perfect breakfast. Add a little bit of cheese on there, no problem. And anytime during, this, anytime during your day you want to throw some vegetables in there, whether that's peppers or tomatoes or whatever else, that's a great breakfast, okay? And it's so simple. And intuitively, we know that's a good breakfast, you know? So, I mean, that's, like, that's the easiest thing you can do. The next step would be maybe something along the lines of like a, a shake, making sure you're getting a, like the vegetables you need, throwing in some, some spinach, some kale, some pro, like a protein powder, some chia seeds, uh, a peanut butter or peanut butter substitute, like a PB2 powdered, and then some almond milk. Okay? That's a great breakfast. That's going to fill you up, going to satiate you, and it's going to fuel your, your progress and your energy all day. The, the main thing I'm hearing is that you don't want to eat the, the traditional breakfast foods, right? I mean, my wife and I always kind of, kind of laugh about what standard breakfast foods are, are muffins and croissants and donuts and... and Dessert. Right, right, right. Yeah, so, but you're 100% right. Yeah, so just... Just like taking the counterculture, um, the counterculture look at this in that like we don't need to be eating, like especially most of us, if we're going to get up and go to work, most of our works are not that like, we're not going out and farming. We're not, most of us aren't doing construction, like hard labor all day. In which case, this is a little different, this would be a different, kind of a different model. But most of us are sitting down. We're mostly doing kind of thoughtful work. Um, most of us need our brains on and our bodies not necessarily working that hard. So in that case, for a high performer in, a, in an arena like this, then high protein, high fat is going to be the number one best way to maximize your energy and your focus throughout the day, which you cannot put a price on. Yeah, that was great stuff. I know uh, Lisa, actually, she's tuning in live. She asked that question about what should we be eating for breakfast? And I think that that gives um, great Great examples, just high, lots of proteins and, and fats and, and eggs and avocados. I think that that's... Yeah, that's I mean, that's, that's so simple, right? I'll give you my, a third one at the risk of, being, of giving too much information out. And, but my number one favorite breakfast, if you're ever in the place where you're like, man, I need energy, I need all day energy, I need to be feeling my best today, I need to be focused, I would have, for men, I'd have like two chicken thighs and a quarter cup of almonds. Wow. Chicken it's kind of a weird, morning. yeah, it's a weird breakfast, right? You don't think about that, right? But um, that also kind of goes into what I think is an ideal way of cooking for the week is batch prep rather than meal prep because I think that sometimes it, you can get bored of tilapia and asparagus. But if you barbecue a bunch of chicken thighs on a Monday or Sunday, you can have those for salads, for tacos, for different dishes throughout the week. So um, you cannot go wrong with some chick with some barbecued chicken thighs and some almonds. In your, in your breakfast. So it's it, like, and, and trust me, if you've never tried this out, Hector, you've got to try it because you'll feel so good all day. I, I have not, but um, you know, there, there are certain days where most of the days I'm, I'm sitting in my office and I go outside uh, to, to walk my dogs and that's the most exposure I, you know, I get to the sun. And so for those days, um, I really try and make sure that my, my diet is, um, or that I'm just not eating any of those, those sugars or, or stuff because I feel it um, you know, even more right when you need your brain. And then I think that there are some days where we're out of the house and it's a, a Disneyland day or it's, it's a lot of activity. And, and um, similarly, I go, oh, well, I'm not in the office, so, so today's the day to eat the carbs and today's the day to, you know, to eat the sugars and not realizing that I still need to have that energy. And so I think that... Um, I've been looking for something to eat on those types of days where I do need, you know, my, my physical energy a little bit more than usual. And I, I, I will take your, uh, I'll take your advice and I'll get you a report on how that goes. All right. Awesome. Let me know. And then, so two things real quick. Number one, I have a, a like a meal plan. Someone actually challenged me like, okay, what does this look like in practice? Like, can you tell me what it looks like on a daily basis, including carbs, calories, proteins, fats? So I wrote it all up. I can send that over to you and anyone else who wants it, you can just, Give it to them. However, you want to disseminate that information. I yeah, want, if you, I you send that it. over, and we'll if you guys are registered, we'll send that out with the video and post awesome. some resources. Um, that'll be that'll be fantastic because I know I know people are definitely looking for that. 
for sure. Yeah. I just want to spell it out. I want to make it, as, make it as easy as possible for people to elevate their consciousness around their nutrition. So the Absolutely. second thing is, and kind of going off topic, is that what you're talking about with the, with the, the sugar, eating sugar like when you're out or on a Disneyland day, is that sugar feeds bacteria in your stomach. Like we, I mean, we, are, we have a ton of bacteria in us, but certain strains of bacteria are actually able to send cravings and hunger signals to your brain. So when you feed it sugar, it sends more cravings to your brain to tell you you need sugar. And so two things about that is number one, it starts that cycle. And number two, it takes up precious bandwidth in your brain to think about being hungry about stuff, especially when you're not hungry, especially when you don't need the calories. So it's just this vicious cycle that can, can, can kind of keep you in this loop until you break it with something like a, like a non-traditional breakfast, like the chicken, chicken and almonds that I was describing. So that's just, that's a little off topic here. Well, I think that, um, all this has been super valuable. I know that, uh, Lisa's had a, gotten a ton of value out of this. And we have some, some other one lifer, Cheryl and Matt Kubler, who's uh, going to be on the presenter summit as well. Um, I'd love for you to get into, you know, carrying this through the, the entire day. Cause I think that the second myth is called the, the nutrition myth and, or the nutritional myth. And um, I think that what starts out in breakfast uh, carries on to lunch and dinner as well, because the things that we think of, as the right types of breakfast or the right types of lunches or even the right types of dinner, right? You know, pastas and pizzas and, and all these types of things. There's just so much uh, misinformation out there about what to eat even the rest of the day. So I'm sure that that kind of ties in, but I'd love for you to, to kind of give some clarity around the, the other two meals um, as well. Okay. Yeah. So I wanted to jump into the nutritionist myth real quick and then kind of come back and talk about lunch and dinner. Um, so, so first of all, I, um, I think that what, like, I don't necessarily know if this is like all nutrition or like this, but I find that many of my clients who have gone to see a nutritionist, for example, the guy in the story I was just telling you about, he had gone to see a nutritionist to have him draw up a meal plan for him. And so she put him on a 1500 calorie per day model. And so it was like, that's pretty low, man. If you're, if you if you weigh more than like 170 pounds, like that's a pretty low amount of calories. And so what, what ends up happening there is you start to actually sap your energy. You start to turn in like your, take your vital um, systems in your body, especially the ones that your body doesn't necessarily think that are that important and it starts to slow those down. So your Krebs cycle decreases, which is deals with how you process your food, your body temperature decreases, which de decreases your metabolism. And then if you're like a toe tapper like me, if you're always kind of like fidgeting, your body shuts that down. It's very clever. Your body wants to keep you alive. So when you decrease your calories, you start decreasing these other processes, which kind of mute your metabolism. So a lot of people, I see this done, like you take, now you take this, like this little, this little thing we're looking at right here and you spend, like you say, okay, you've done this for eight years. You've been on and off deprivation diets for like eight, 10 years. What do you think's happened to your metabolism during that time? It just keeps shooting, shooting down. Okay. So that's what I wanted to draw up here was kind of the, so you get the caloric restriction. Is that showing up backwards for you? Uh, no, it, it looks right. If you could angle the camera down just a smidge though, I think they'll be able to. All right. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So you go, you, you get massive caloric, caloric restriction. Then what happens is it goes over here and you get those feelings of burnout. You start like you start having to like really flex your your mental muscles on every single day to be like I can't eat that that's off limits I can't eat that that's dirty I can't eat that it's too many calories and that occupies a lot of mental space another thing we're trying to get away from because we have better things to do with our brain than to be constantly thinking about how many calories are in a slice of apple okay that's just not that's not what we've been called to do to serve as many people as possible so we need to get free up the mental space as well as getting rid of this because what ends up happening then is the the next the next thing is we start getting those feelings of deprivation Maybe that says deprived that yeah. sense? Mm -hmm. yeah and then the next thing that happens here is you get You read that? Uh, it says, that, yes. That's right. 
definitely that's when you, that's when you're like the, that's the rebound that's the i like i i want it i deserve it i i'm gonna eat it that's like so anyone who's been on a diet for you know for an extended period of time is familiar with with this cycle where you go you feel deprived you burn out you go i'm just gonna i'm just gonna eat it whatever else and then you in order to get back into place you start decreasing your calories again it's this cycle okay so that's like that's the mental model of this nutritionist myth what happens when we decrease our calories too much over time so then what ends up happening is there like the physiological model is like what i was describing earlier is you start off here you start decreasing your calories okay over here now we're going to start slowing down our physical function that's the decrease in temperature slowing down of the krebs cycle different things like that then right here now we're going to start decreasing our basal metabolic rate that's when your metabolism starts muting itself and then over here the bad part is what happens is your body starts holding on to more fat and then some people consider like consider this like starvation mode which is you know 50 50 that's a real thing but what happens is your body goes i don't know when our next meal is coming from and i don't know how much cal how many how much food we're going to get during that time so what we're going to do is we're going to burn off all the food we eat first and we're going to hold on to those fat stores so your fat loss stalls so you're eating 1500 cal 1500 calories per day you're feeling super sluggish no low energy and on top of that you're not burning any more fat because your body's protecting it your body does not want to change it loves homeostasis loves to stay the same so when you're cutting your calories massively like this you're actually not giving it a good reason to change you're scaring it a little bit so that's and so then you just take this model and you multiply this by months and months and years and years for some of us and you end up with feelings of burnout not being able to lose weight pants that never like that are always fitting too tight and that that lack of focus lack of energy on a daily basis so that's the that's the, the piece that i think a lot of people forget about is that you can't just diet and exercise your way to a new body, a new physique, a new mental, mental attitude. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Totally. I mean, one of the big things that I realized recently, and I had this conversation with my mom because she says, you know, now it's all relative because fam every families are different, but she says, you're so skinny and you know, you must be working out all the time. And it's like, well, no, it's actually eating right. Has a, I, I tried working out a ton and it didn't get me anywhere. And I got much further by, eating better and and you actually don't need to work out as much as you think um, when you when you eat the right way and so I think that you're absolutely correct in, in identifying that nutrition before exercise is the is the first step it and is then, the first and then step all those other things yeah absolutely and then once you have that like once you have, I think it's three phases I think phase one is dialing in the nutrition and figuring out a way that it works for you and your lifestyle okay so that's what I'm all trying to trying to do I'm not trying to tell you you need to be eating this for your diet and this on a diet and this diet. You know, I want to make sure that everything you do is facilitate, like is giving you a better way of working it into your own lifestyle. So if eggs work better for you in the morning, great. If a shake is where it's at for you, great. I do shakes in the morning because I don't like to eat. And so, but I still want to make sure I start my day off with the, with the right fuel to get me through like a long day of hard work. So, so actually the thing about this, that actually, that really, the one thing that my client Terrence has said to me when when we were talking about this, he was like, "Man, my my clothes are fitting looser, but I still feel bad, and I actually like the way I felt better when I was heavier." I was like, "Whoa! Like how how sad is that? That he was just so crushed from an energy perspective and from a performance perspective that he wished he could go back to where he was when he was still a little heavier." So he was super scared because he wanted, he's like, well, do we have to drop my, my calories more? I don't know if I can, but we raised his calories and we raised his carbohydrates way back up. And I'm not going to say that, okay, it just takes, it just takes like two weeks and you got this fixed. It's no problem. It took, it takes a couple of months to get back on the train where you're actually rebuilding your metabolism back up. But what's great is you can eat more food. You can enjoy more food and you have to, and you can take a break from this mental exhaustion you just put on yourself. So yeah so that's that's uh that's why i think that getting out away from the cutting calories idea of dieting and getting into the performance enhancing idea of dieting is going to make the longest term difference because 97 percent of people who go on a weight loss journey um fail or or gain the weight back and more even so that's a three percent rate that's terrible we have all the information in the entire world right now at our fingertips 
and and it's still a three percent success rate on weight loss. Well, I, I remember growing up the the reason you know you would eat food was because it tasted good, and that was the that was what you chose food based off of. And after running a business and doing 12, 14, 16 hour days consistently, you know, you, you start to realize that, <laughs> that that food is there not just to make you feel good or taste good, but it, it's actually your fuel. And, and I think that that fundamental shift, I know for me, has changed my entire outlook on, on what even tastes good. So, you know, that becomes the filter through which I, I put it through. And sometimes things still slip through and you know, I just want to slice a pizza before I go to bed, but, <laughs> but, but for the most part, you know, at least that's, that's the lens through which I'm making my decision about food is how is it going to make me feel? Not, does it just taste good? Uh -huh. uh, and I think that a lot of people are still growing up are still living in that, what just tastes good um, mentality. And I think that your, your nutritionist myth is, is kind of wrapped up in, around that and that every calorie is not the same. Um, and that they all, you know, so that's fantastic. Um, anything else, Nate? I know, I know we, we haven't really talked about lunch and, and dinner, but I'd imagine a lot of these concepts and things like, you know, that we've, we've talked about can be, um, you know, applied to, to the other meals of the day. It looks like that was really what, what came in was Lisa's question on, on what, you know, what should we eat? So I'd love for you to finish with any thoughts that you know you still want to get out to the community and and just kind of talk a little bit about you know what are we're coming up on you know the afternoon for for us who are recording this live so what, what should people be thinking as they head throughout the rest of their day as well a great question and i really like what you said about your priority shifting i think that like once that becomes your lens of your priority hector is growing your business and how and like being the best dad and husband you can and if those are your priorities, then like a Cinnabon has no place in that, right? That doesn't just doesn't, it doesn't make sense at all, okay? So kind of going now back, to, if we back up to breakfast, we have a high protein, high fat breakfast, and then we jump into lunch. The goal of lunch for, for us is a little different than what a, a kind of, we're taking that counterculture idea as well. So what we want to do is we want to think back to our kind of our hereditary, like our heritage, and think about that we are, we are we've evolved to be hunters. We've evolved to stay focused all day to have the maximum energy and focus. So one thing that you don't have when you're full of pizza or a Cinnabon is that hunting killer instinct. Okay. <clears throat> and the, the way we're going to kind of define this is by saying parasympathetic nervous system. That's how you feel like that's what, what that's what's engaged when you're full. That's your rest and digest system. Okay. Your sympathetic nervous system, the opposite side, that's your fight or flight, your hunting like system. So when your sympathetic nervous system is, is turned on, that's when you're going to be your best at your workouts. That's when you're your best at going out and prospecting, making calls, being up on stage, being on. Okay. And I don't need, you don't need to be like fully like adrenaline, like shaking, but if you have a light kind of a, you're lightly on all day, that's where, where you're going to get the best um, results, both in your business, both with your family and every other and every other place that you're choosing to put your energy. So we wanna just maximize how we keep that sympathetic nervous system turned on during the day by eating very light, okay? So I'm not saying starve yourself, but I am saying do not fill up at lunch. That's why the best lunch you can have is I call it a big ass salad, okay? Um, it's just like, you, and this is great because you can go anywhere and get a salad. You can go to Chick-fil-A, you can get a salad at Burger King, you can get a salad at Chipotle, you can get a salad, you can make one at home. But the goal here is to go high vegetable, high protein, okay? Very simple. So if that's fajitas for you, if you're heating up some cauliflower rice, uh, having a bag of baby carrots, and then having a leftover chicken thigh that you, that you batch prepped, that's, that counts, you know? But if you're on the road, I, I actually gave in my the meal plan, you'll see, I gave two options. One is for eating out and one is for eating at home. Um, but the goal is to stay a little bit south of full. Okay? You don't want to be, you don't want to be stuffed. You don't want to be lethargic. And you don't want to have that 2.30 time where you're like, hmm, I really use a nap right now. Because while your competitors in, in for your business, for your career, are doing that, or they have that 2.30 slump, you need to be turned on. You need to be focused because one call per day, one new client per day can make a massive difference in most of our businesses. So if we could just have one more productive conversation in the afternoon, at the end of one year, 
you're going to be so far ahead of everyone else who could not have that conversation because they did not have the energy. And it, and it comes down to your lunch, eating light, eating right. How's that sound? Doable? That's such a, once again, a great perspective to have, you know, you, uh, you don't realize what you're missing out on. You know, a lot of us are, at least I'm rationally, you know, speaking for myself, you know, a lot of us are solopreneurs or freelancers or we're, we're working from home and we like, you know, I, I rationalize and say, I, I can take a two thirty nap and you know, that's, that's, that's my prerogative, not realizing the opportunity cost of, um, of doing that and, and realizing that the reason is simply because we just ate too much at lunch, you know, and it, and it, it comes down to, to those decisions where if you have a reason to not do something or there's something, you know, if there's no reason to not eat pizza or there's no reason to not get full at, at lunch, then, um, then it makes, then it's easy to just blow through that, that stop sign. But if you kind of have that in your head where I, I need one more productive session or I need, you know, one more, uh, you know, prospecting, you know, time block or whatever it is, um, that it gives people a, a reason to do it. And I think that makes things so much easier. So that's, and it, like, that's like you said, so eloquently, it comes back to your priorities. Like is your priority to grow your business? Well, if so, you're probably, if you're probably not going to have as good of a, like a Facebook live in chat in your chat bot group. If you don't, if you're, if you're feeling sluggish, if you're feeling slow, if your brain's not working at hundred percent, but if you can eat light, then go live and then be dynamic, energized, and put on a, like a much better presentation. Who, how many more people are you going to attract with that kind of energy? You know? Yeah. Absolutely. So, absolutely. And then, oh, just real quickly go into dinner because people are always like, wait, do you have any, we, any carbs during the day at all? Like, yes, yes. We do it reverse than most people. Okay. So now in the PM, that's when we're going to have the most, the majority of our carbs. So you'll like great carb sources include like rice, black beans, sweet potatoes. By the way, sweet potatoes and potatoes, very similar in nutrients. So it's not one versus the other. It's eat which one you like. Same with brown rice and white rice. About the same. Don't use whatever, whatever one you like. It's, it's fine. Then we're going to have a, so we're going to have a carb source. We're going to have a protein source. And we're going to have a vegetable. Okay. We're going to focus on quality nutrition. And when we talk about these foods, I like to use the, like the, the idea of let's eat a nutritious lunch. Let's eat nutritious dinners. I think the idea of clean versus dirty is, um, number one, not clear, and number two, very polarizing. So I think that's I think that if we start thinking about our food in terms of how nutritious is this, how much like vitamins and minerals are we going to get, how are we going to take this and turn this into high octane fuel for our bodies, which are essentially Ferraris, right? You get one, you get to drive around the rest of the whole your whole life. Let's wash and wax this bad boy because you have some work to do, right? Yeah. So, well, I I think what what I'd love to hear as we kind of wind down um, is that we've kind of talked about going counterculture, right? Kind of, you know, going against the norm. And I think about, you know, traditional in my family, traditional um, dinners included tacos and enchiladas and burrito, you know, it was very heavy and, and frankly, a nutrient lacking. And, and I even, I think of, you know, a lot of other people where, you know, lasagnas and spaghettis and, you know, casseroles were, were the norm. What, um, is, is there something to, to that in terms of breaking away from what the traditional even, you know, dinner going, you know, going away from that, that sad diet, um, the standard American diet, or, <laughs> or is there, or is there room for casseroles and lasagnas and you know, enchiladas and stuff like that? Well, one of the things I, I love about this kind of the style of eating is that if you've eaten really well and kind of in line with your performance and your priorities throughout the day. And if you want to go home, you want to have some, some pasta with your family. Go ahead. You're getting the carb source from the pasta. You're getting some vegetable servings from the, the sauce, and you're getting the protein from you know whatever meat you're putting in that. You know now throwing a little bit of like now if you want to go ahead and say like oh I'm going to do like a quinoa based pasta with like some grass fed grass fed beef or lamb. That's actually now you're having a great meal. You know so you can make these little small tweaks. But what's nice is that this kind of diet actually gives you the flexibility to have you know some enchiladas and not feel like you're necessarily blowing it. You know, because right. what's great about this is now that we've increased our carb load at night, we've again shot that blood sugar up. You start feeling a little bit tired, right? Like that 2.30 burrito bowl feeling. But now that's 7.30 p.m., 8 p.m., and then you can go right into a, a deeper sleep. So we're using those carbohydrate loads to actually augment our sleep, roll into the next day where we're feeling better and better. 
that's why it's called the glycogen priming method because we're priming our glycogen for the next day and actually using our dinners to maximize our sleep, maximize our energy tomorrow. And then what's the opposite of a vicious, vicious spiral or vicious cycle? It's like that. It's the opposite. Mm. It's, an, it's an excellent cycle. An upward staircase. Okay. I like it. <laughs> um, Does that make sense though? Like, so yeah, and just because yeah. I want you to be able to eat with your family too. I don't want you to have to be like, all right, baby gets this, Andrew get this, mom and I are having this, but I don't want any ice cream. Because like, you know, if you want to have a little ice cream, you want to have like a chocolate, a little, like a square of chocolate. I want you to live your life too. I don't want you to be so deprived, you know? And then, you know, if you are in a place where you want to lose more fat, you would cut, you can cut a few of those things out, the heavier meals, cut your pasta back to like once a week. But I also don't want to, like, I, I, like kind of what we're talking about over here, I don't want the feelings of deprivation. I want you to, nothing's off limits. Nothing's dirty. We just want to make sure that we're thinking about things in the right way. We know what proteins do for our body. We know what fats do for our body. We know what carbohydrates do for our body. We know what vegetables do. When you know all those things, then you can start plugging and playing based on your specific situation, your priorities, and your goals, right? So the first piece is education. You need to know, you need to know what, like what, what you're putting in your body does to you. Absolutely. This has been so valuable. And I, I always, you know, I, I mention this every time we chat that these are selfishly very valuable for me. And I, I'm sure that the, the community got a, a lot of value out of this as well. Um, Nate mentioned that he put together a meal plan that he is willing to give away to the community. So if you want to get that, make sure you sign up at onelifefullylive.org slash online dash summit. The link's in the, uh, in the post there. And um, you'll also get access to all of the recordings that we record. We've got about uh, almost a dozen of the presenters from this year's conference. Uh, we're going to be streaming with them over the next, uh, next three or four days. It's going to be an exciting time, a ton of value, and really just a little, a little taste of what the conference is going to be like. And there's, there's nothing quite like immersing yourself around hundreds of people who are all growth oriented and you know, driven and, and, and ambitious in their own ways. Um, but we're trying to give you a little bit of a taste here through this uh, One Life presenter. 90 minutes stuff. from now, Sean Douglas coming on. It's going to be good. Yeah, we are, it, we're, right. we're hitting all, all areas of it. It's going to, it's going to be a really transformative few days. Uh, similar to what the conference is going to be is it's going to be a, a transformative experience. And you know, we're trying to do that, that virtually here. Uh, before as well. So Nate, thanks so much for spending some time with us today as always. And the rest of you guys go get registered and signed up and we'll see you on the next one.